Welcome to the Eat Away Kidney Stones podcast. I'm your host, registered dietitian and kidney stone expert, Melanie Betts. After learning a ton about kidney stones and helping people prevent stones at the University of Chicago, I was fed up with all the terrible advice people were finding online. So I decided to do something about it. The Kidney Dietitian was born. This podcast is for people who want to learn what actually works to prevent kidney stones and still enjoy life, eating, and their favorite foods. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the 54th episode of the Eat Away Kidney Stones podcast. And today I'm going to be talking about kind of a very niche, very specific topic, but it is one that I'm getting more and more questions about, so I thought that I would tackle it, and that is struvite kidney stones. Um, We know that the vast majority of kidney stones are made of calcium, most notably calcium oxalate, with somewhere around 75 or so percent of stones being calcium oxalate, and also uh, less commonly calcium phosphate. Um, But there are a lot of other uh, we'll, we'll call them niche types of kidney stones, with struvite being one of them. Um, also cysteine stones and uric acid stones. But today we're going to be talking about struvite stones. Um, another word for struvite kidney stones is something called staghorn kidney stones. And these kidney stones tend to be pretty nasty, unfortunately. Um, these kidney stones tend to be very large and they tend to grow very, very quickly. And so Um, they really, really have to be dealt with very fast. Um, Most usually um, with some sort of kidney stone surgery or removal procedure, again, because they just tend to be so big so quickly. Um, Unlike calcium stones, which can kind of, you know, take years and years to grow and hang out in your kidneys forever, um, staghorn or struvite kidney stones really need to be dealt with quickly. Um, So these kidney stones are very unique in that they are basically exclusively related to infection. Um, Infection mostly being chronic urinary tract infections or UTIs. Um, And so what happens is when you have an infection, you obviously have bacteria in there, right? That's what's causing that infection from whatever that that might be caused. Um, So so these bacteria... Um, break up urea, which is in your urine, right? (laughs) That's what's being excreted in your urine is urea. And that urea is broken down into ammonia ammonia and CO2. And then that is further broken down into ammonium and bicarb, which basically, if if you know about chemistry at all, these things are all very alkaline substances. And so your urine can get very, very alkaline very quick. And that um, super, super alkaline urine is what predisposes basically this person to form these struvite stones um, without getting too much in the weeds. <laughs> that's kind of the, the pathophysiology of what's going on here. Um, and so because these struvite kidney stones are nearly exclusively related to infection, they are more common in people who are more com- or more prone to have urinary tract infections. So some of these groups or people are women because women are definitely more likely to have a UTI compared to men. Somewhere around three to one ratio is what I typically find is the prevalence or increased chances of having a UTI in, in females versus males. And so that you know makes sense that women would also be much more likely to have these staghorn or struvite kidney stones. Um, they're also going to be more common in people who are older, um, people who have some sort of surgery in their urinary tract on people who have a bladder isn't working, people who have catheters chronically, um, maybe people who have quadriplegia for whatever reason that you might have that catheter in forever, um, people who have medullary sponge kidney um, who are more like these people are more likely to have stones generally, but um, also more likely to have infections and therefore more likely to also have these types of stones um, and all sorts of other, um, t- other conditions. Any condition that is increasing your risk of having urinary tract infections is going to increase your risk essentially of having these struvite or staghorn kidney stones. And so the question of course is what can we do nutritionally? nutritionally to prevent them. And honestly, there isn't much nutritionally. Because these stones are so, so tied to that infection, treatment 101 is going to be treating that infection. So antibiotics and whatever your doctor is telling you to do to um, reduce that infection or get rid of that infection, that is going to ultimately reduce the risk of forming more of these stones. Nutritionally, it does matter to drink a lot of water, right? (laughs) Um, Because drinking a lot of water is A, going to reduce the risk of those urinary tract infections, which is in turn going to reduce the risk of that stone 
stone. Plus, obviously, drinking a lot of water is stone prevention generally 101 because the more water we drink, the less concentrated our urine is going to be of whatever substance we're trying to reduce the the stone risk of, right? Um, including struvite. And so um, drinking a lot of water is definitely the um, biggest thing that I could do as a dietitian that we can do nutritionally to reduce the risk of these very problematic staghorn kidney stones or struvite kidney stones. So in many ways, struvite stones are really a lot more straightforward than a lot of other types of stones. Um, like I said, they do tend to be nasty just because they tend to be so large and grow so quickly. So they're definitely not easy exactly, um, but the treatment tends to be a lot more straightforward. You treat that infection and when that that infection is treated and they do whatever they need to do to um, reduce the UTIs in the future, that is going to be the most important thing to prevent these struvite kidney stones. Um, so, you know, all of the other things we talk about, sodium, oxalate, calcium, protein, like none of that really matters that much when it comes to struvite kidney stones. It really just comes down to drinking a lot of water to help reduce that urine concentration and also prevent your risk of UTIs so you don't form more of these in the future. So this is a really short episode, but like I said, struvite stones are pretty straightforward, but I've been getting more and more questions about them lately. So I wanted to make sure that I um, mentioned them on the podcast because I do think that it is important to understand all the different types of kidney stones out there, if you're interested, of course. So with that, I will end this episode of the Eat Away Kidney Stones podcast. And as always, if you have a question that you would like to submit, for a chance to get answered on the podcast. I would love, love, love to hear from you. If you just head to kidneystonepodcast.com, you can record that question. I, again, would love to hear you. I love listening to the questions that come in. It's so fun. So if there is anything that's on your mind that you are dying to uh, ask me, (laughs) please do submit a question. So with that, again, I will close this episode of the podcast and I hope to see you next week. Thank you for listening to today's episode. For more help with kidney stones, check out my website, www.thekidneydietitian.org. For more personalized help from me, check out my online course, Kidney Stone Nutrition School. VIP enrollment includes help directly from me. I can't wait to see you there and help you prevent kidney stones. Have a great day.